We're very pleased to have him to speak to us today, Brian Germain. Mm -hmm. All right. oh. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good. Huh? Good day. All right. So the topic is transcending fear. And I find that immediately when I say the word fear, there's a little immediate resistance. Not everybody. Who wants to talk about something that doesn't feel good? And yet, I've learned that if we don't talk about fear with the skydivers, for example, I've been training skydivers for 24 years. If we don't talk about that part, and all I teach them is, here's your main, that's how you open the first parachute. If that doesn't work, plan B involves cutting away the first one, and getting, you know, getting the second one out. If all I teach them is that, if all I teach them is how to free fall and not go unstable in free fall, I'm missing a big chunk of the equation. And I think that we're learning that in business, in life, and everything else, our emotional intelligence, our ability to work with our physiology, and the thoughts that occur to us as a result of that mood, of that state of mind, is pivotal. It changes the outcome. Right? We can think of it as, all right, well, if I can teach somebody how to calm down and have a good time when they jump out of an airplane, I'm just changing their story afterwards. Right? They have a better experience. And yep, that's true. And if I don't train them how to calm down and focus their mind on exactly what they want to do, the best possible scenario, it, they will fixate on the worst possible scenarios because they're trying to avoid it. And so what I found, and this is the weird part, is that there is a consequence to what they're focusing their mind upon. That if they really worry a lot, and they sit in the plane, you can see them. I mean, can you imagine somebody you know, getting ready to jump out of an airplane for the first time ever. They get the parachute on the back, it's not very comfortable. The plane is noisy and it's cold and it's most of them are rattling. They're held together with duct tape, you know, when you use cheap, cheap airplanes. And they are contracted, you know. Think about what, what's, what's their breathing going to be like. And they hold their breath, their face is, you know, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's red, depending on and they are thinking only about what they don't want to see happen. They don't want to tumble out the door and have their parachute get spun up. They don't want to crash into the ground. They don't want to land in the water. They don't want to hit a tree. And all they can think about is those things. The cautions, right? I don't want that to happen. Take this as a metaphor. That's my point. That's why I'm here. In life, we have loads of things to be afraid of. I'm not saying we should avoid thinking about them, but we should avoid dwelling upon them because what I've noticed about the skydivers is that when they jump out of the airplane with huge amounts of fear and all they have is negative visualizations and they haven't been practic practicing in their mind the positive possibilities and preparing for the positive possibilities to occur, sort of being ready to receive that, they have the worst case scenarios playing out way more frequently. Way more frequently. We see parachute malfunctions at a higher rate. We see mistakes on landing. And I've, I've come to uh, create a term to describe this phenomenon. I call it the one tree phenomenon. So invariably, in any skydiving field where you're going to land in this big, flat, hopefully flat chunk of grass, there'll be one tree. There's bound to be one tree. <laughs> and I say to them, here's the deal. You know, you can, you can land over there, you can land over there. Even if you land across the street, just, you know, look out for the power lines. But please, there's this one tree. Please don't hit the tree. <laughs> Guess what's in their head, right? So they're in the airplane thinking themselves and repeating over and over and over, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree. How do you think they make themselves feel because they're thinking about that? And invariably, I'll, I'll talk to them on the radio, of course. You know, we don't just shove them out of the plane. We've got a radio on. We'll just say, turn left, turn right, because you know, guess what happens if you don't tell them what to do? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> right? They freeze. That's part of the fear response, isn't it? Doing, doing nothing. Some say that it comes from nature hiding. Right? Hiding from the danger. And I say turn left, turn right, and I point them in the right direction, which is into the wind for landing, because it minimizes the ground speed, increases the chances of them walking away from the landing. And there's that tree off to the right. So they keep going like this. <laughs> and what happens is, I don't know how this occurs, but I've seen it play out many, many times over the past 24 years of training parachutes. 
whether they hit it or they land right next to it, right? Because there is a magnetic attraction to whatever we keep thinking about, isn't there? And so my point here is that fear is consequential. Just like creating a state of mind that results in success, right? Where you feel great. When you think about an athlete that achieves on the highest level, and of course my experience is skydiving. I competed in the World Championships, the, the X Games, you may have heard of that. And, and I spent a lot of time you know, playing King of the Mountain <laughs> with that one, training 10, 15 jumps every day, getting up in the morning and jogging and doing push-ups and eating lots of bananas and drinking lots of water. That's pretty much all you do when you're training. And I learned that the people that I was competing against, especially in a higher level, and we're talking about in the X Games, 118 countries are watching us. There's stress just from that, right? The, the people that are there all are qualified to win. But the ones that fixate on what they don't want, which is, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to tumble the exit. I don't want to forget the routine in the middle of the, the jump. They keep thinking those thoughts, and guess what? They don't win. <laughs> they never win. It's the ones that have the ability to notice, I'm thinking about something that doesn't make me feel like a winner. I'm making myself feel bad. I can feel it in my gut. And as in the ones that do the opposite, they see that, okay, I don't want to fixate on that. Yes, I don't want to tumble the exit. What can I do to address that? I might rehearse it on the ground. I might visualize it going perfectly in my mind. But if I can't conjure even that, I need to stop. I need to stop not thinking. I need to stop worrying. I need to stop feeling bad. And how do I do that? And that's a big question, right?